Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to this channel. Big hello to all the new subs. Welcome and thanks for stopping in. Um, so in my last video, I kind of did a little presentation about these Yamaha, roughly 2000, year 2002-ish, um, up to 2005 when they changed it, they put, instead of an electric choke or a manual choke, they put a electro thermal fuel enrichment unit. Electric Thermal Fuel Enrichment Unit. And I kind of showed in that last video their junk. And uh, this little window of four stroke, nine, turn nine and 15 horsepower, four stroke Yamahas are cold starting because of it. And so, I said I was going to see if I could come up with some kind of manual choke, and that's what it did. And I'm going to show you what it got. You can see what you think. Um, maybe other ways of doing it. This is what I did, so let's look. Okay, here's my cable. And then I've got a couple of washers, and I've got a plastic nut that threads up on this piece here. It's threaded. So this will come up. Gee, crickets. I dropped it. It'll come up and it screws there and it'll pinch it in between the two washers and the cowl. And then I'll thread a cable through there and I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay. I took some cardboard and I traced the intake and I added a little bit extra on the one side so I'll have a place to put the cable through. So that's all that is, that's cardboard. And then I took that, put it on a piece of flat aluminum and made one out of aluminum. I drilled a hole just like that one and then I took Diablo, my die grinder, you could use a hacksaw, whatever, and cut it to make a slot. The roll pin goes in the slot, like so. Then you drill this hole on the hinge a little bit smaller so it, you have to tap it in there. And that keeps it all together. So, I made this piece here, which is the hinge, which will go right there, out of a thumb screw, sort of like this one. Okay, so there's the setup for the butterfly. Okay, and you see how I got all these? I've got a flat washer, a nut, a lock washer, and a nylock sticking on my hinge pin bolt right here. And the reason why... It you see how that sticks out that away. All right, it works like as a counterweight because of all the weight that's sticking out here. Oop. It makes the thing want to open. And that'll give me when I draw it shut with the cable, when I go to push it open, it'll want to fall. So you get the idea. Okay, here's the little Outboard in question. Can you see it? Now there was a hole already here. It had a rubber plug in it. I popped that rubber plug out and decided that's where I was going to put the manual choke. Because it looks good there. It's not in the way of anything. I can pull it, push it. So that's where I put it. You know, kind of like normal. Um, 
The choke cable is just your standard. You could probably go to any good lawnmower shop and uh, get this type of cable. Any place, any kind of motorcycle shop, probably even the big box hardware store. I like this one because it had the choke symbol on it. And uh, I already had it. So, But I'm sure you could pick that up at any good lawn and garden center that sells mower equipment, yard equipment, that kind of thing. Um, it's just like the one back in the day I had an old Dodge truck and I put one of these on my old Dodge truck. It had a slant six in it. It had some kind of coil plastic device mounted to the side of the carburetor that never worked when it was cold. So I hooked one of these to the butterfly valve and it worked just fine. And uh, if you watch right here, here's the gooseneck. And when I pull the choke, it closes it off. When I open the choke, it opens it up. And you can see I drilled a hole through this top of the gooseneck to put this. And I put a nut on that side, a nut on that side. Then I got a washer. And I got this spring because even though I've got it a little bit counter offset with a, you know, a little bit of weight right here, I was thinking that when this thing's running wide open throttle, it might suck that back in. So I didn't want that. And I've got plenty of room to adjust this if I want to open it more, but that's actually a lot bigger than it looks. There's going to be a lot of air sucking down through there. And uh, so, and then I'll show you. I got my thermal gun here. This is a cold engine. Showing 69 degrees. Where's the spark plugs on this thing? Over here on this side probably. 70. So that's what it is in my garage right now. So down there by the oil and so forth. She's nice and cold. So now one thing I found with this motor is if you shut that choke all the way, it seems to almost flood itself. So I'm not I'm gonna leave it just a little bit open. And um let's squeeze the bulb. So I could close it all the way, but it seems to flood, and so I want to leave it just a little. When I pull it out, I can push it back in just a little. I think something like that probably do just fine. You can see there's a little little bit of air intake there. Oh, let's see what's oh let me turn on this noise box. Starter, then it came through. Oh. 
sorry about that. I put the cable here and you have to kind of feed it up under the recoil unit, the starter. And then it comes out back here, kind of right below the rectifier on this side. You can't see it, it's black, that's why I'm not going to film it. Then it wraps around the back. You can see it coming right there, it wraps around. I pushed it down in there and then made a gooseneck and comes up and I zip tied it there. And it seems to work just fine. And like I said, if I want to open this more, I got extra cable, I got extra threads here, and I can do that, but I don't I don't see a need to. Um, so that's how I came up with a manual choke. I cut this out of aluminum, and this is like a foam stuff right here. I glued on there. This little stop, you go to the hardware store, they'll have these little drawers and stuff where they keep that kind of thing, different clips and different screws. This is, I think they called this a cable clamp. Um, and then I just got an old spring I had around here and put right there with a washer. That, that way when you're running wide open throttle, this, can't, this thing can't suck itself back in. It's going to have to stay open because that spring's going to keep it there. But when you want to choke it, there's not enough resistance. So. So that's how I overcame the electric thermal fuel enrichment unit. Now it's still hooked up. I don't think it does anything, but because it's still hooked up, as the flywheel spins and the charge gets sent to this unit, it would, if it was working, which this one does appear to work, it would push it down to the warm, normal run position. But when it's cold and it's supposed to choke this thing, they never seem to do it. And this is a, I found this to be actually very simple to do. There was really nothing to it. Well, the hardest part was cutting this little piece of aluminum here. You, you gotta have a die grinder jigsaw or something, but I mean, this could probably be made out of plexiglass, just about anything. Um, so it was quite simple and it works quite well. And the bonnet does fit on there nice with it. There's no interference with the hood on this thing or, or anything. Again, we'll pull it out a little bit. wondering why it's smoking a little bit there's still some two-stroke gas in that fuel hose I'm using I just took it off my two-stroke tank put it in on my little four-stroke tank ain't gonna hurt a thing in fact this one's been sitting quite a while in fact I've got to free up these clamps here they won't even work so I'll drill out the oiler hole a little larger and squirt the juice in there I squirt the juice Okay, I got me a propeller on this 9, perp 9, long shaft. So we're going to put it in the tank and make sure the lower's all good. Hey, how about that?
more than anything. That's where I'm trying to get, I loosen these big nuts and I'm trying to get it to where it'll tilt easier. So I put this in there and hit it with my air hammer. It might have helped a little.
that noise box. Got to get a pin in there, a tilt pin. Whoops, look what I did. Look what I did. Get out of there. Well, I want to thank Mr. Daniel Robert for sending me the schematic on that mercury uh, gas tank. He, he found a schematic on that, which I have henceforth printed out. And that mystery little thing was indeed a primer uh, device. And I didn't realize how complex. Some people had weighed in early about that mercury tank, about how it was like kind of over-engineered and so forth by uh, that bunch over at Kai Kiefer Hicker, Hiefer Kiefer, Kai Hiefer, Hiefer, Hiefer Parker, Hiefer Lucan Lunker um, boys back in the day. Um, so in the schematic that he sent me, <laughs> it is an engineering marvel up under those eight screws or whatnot. So, but the way I, I looked at the uh, at the schematic was if you were using it with a fuel pump motor, um, you you wouldn't need the primer at all um, because you've got the old squeezy squeak it squeak it squeak it squeezy bulb that would send gas to the motor and the fuel pump would take over. So, but that is indeed what that little mystery switch thing is. I still don't know how to work it. I think mine's stuck, and I'm just going to leave it that way because I won't need it. But uh, on the little nine per nine four stroker with the modified manual choke, um, I've got the little small propeller. Just a minute. Now, I have seen these four strokers. In fact, I have one that have this. Now, this says eight horsepower, but it fits right on that one. Um, splines are the same. It, it fits right on. But some of you prop guys, of which I, I don't pretend to be. Um, but this is what I think they call high thrust. You can see it's, I mean, it's a big old Mickey Mouse fins on it, and, you know, not a lot of pitch going on there. So, would this, at idle, you know, or, I keep saying at idle, I'm sorry about that. In gear, without giving it in throttle, any throttle. So, just, you know, as the engine's idling and I put it in forward, would this make me go slower? I don't mean by coming up to speed. I'm, I'm talking about trolling here. Would this make me go slower if I had just popped it in gear and was trying to troll? Or would it make me go faster? Now, it's my understanding the more pitch you have when you go to wide open throttle, you're going to go faster. Um, so you can see this one. It says 15 and all, but it, it fit right on there as well. In fact, this is what I basically have on there, this one. It says Mariner and Yamaha, but it, it'll fit both for a couple years. But this is the prop that's on there right now. And when I'm at idle and I put it in forward, it still seems to move a lot of water. And I'm in the situation where I have extras. So, could I cut this down to just little nubs and get, you know, you can only idle it down so far and then it's going to die. Um, but what I, I'm thinking when the, it depends on the year here, but sometimes during the silver season, silver salmon season around um, 
mid-August on, they come in here really thick, and they're easy to pick up trolling, but, you know, you can't be going too fast. you got to just put along. And I have my little, you know, three-horse, two-stroke, and I've got a little four-horsepower Yamaha. But even those seem to push the boat a little faster than I want to go. So this one's a extra long shaft, and I thought maybe I could make a propeller, cut it down to where there ain't much left, and put it in gear and might get me down to about three knots or so. It's either that or use my little two strokers. But I've got these four strokers around, and uh, I might play with that some. What do you think? So let me know on these props because I don't know. I, I, you know, I see them come in here with these things, but I have never taken one out and run it with one of these to see what it, what it would do. And I don't know what prop came with that motor because it, I got it without a propeller. So, but I do have another one over there that's the same year. It's just a short shaft, and it had one of these smaller ones on it. I have a long shaft, older generation over there, four stroke, the white ones. It has one of these on it, and it's a long shaft. So, what's better for trolling? Little bitty with pitch, big and wide with very little pitch. I don't know. You gotta let me know. So, um, other things, that pin you saw me pull out of the motor was me attempting to use my hammer drill to loosen up the tilt. It's real stiff on there. It does tilt, and I, I drilled some holes and squirted some lube, some juice in there, and hopefully that'll help that. So let her sit and work it a little bit. Um, I've got one of the transom clamps freed up. The other one is still a little tight, but uh, it's got the juice on it as well. And I don't think I'll have to do the, the soak thing. So it's coming along. And it really just needs to be taken out and run and run good, good and hard. That's what this thing needs. Been sitting too long, you understand. So we hacked the choke, manual choke on there. And this one's getting long, it's getting late, so as always, that is definitely one more hack from Kodiak. Thank you for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Upwards with your host, Cody Bass.